Welcome. I am a lay Shin Buddhist who nevertheless maintains an interest in the broader realm of Pure Land and Mahayana Buddhist teachings. My YouTube channel is called Akala Akala, that is A-C-A-L-A, A-C-A-L-A. -A -A. In these podcasts, I make a non-scholarly, humble, and sometimes bumbling attempt to explore a particular topic or question related to the wonderful Buddha Dharma. I hope you find them to be of interest. With that said, let us begin. I have implied and actually probably expressed in a fairly explicit way in previous podcasts that Shinran Shonen, the 13th century saint who basically was the founder of Jodo Shinshu or Shin Buddhism, that he was a very humble man. And I had mentioned that incident where he he basically denied that he had any disciples. Well, I've, I've mentioned now the Tani Show, and in the second chapter of the Tani Show is where we see that particular story, if you will, where Shinran supposedly says, Each of you has crossed the borders of more than ten provinces to come to see me, undeterred by concern for your bodily safety, solely to inquire about the way to birth in the land of bliss. But if you imagine in me some special knowledge of a way of birth other than the Nembutsu, or a familiarity with writings that teach it, you are greatly mistaken. If that is the case, you would do better to visit the many eminent scholars in Nara, or on Mount Hai, and inquire fully of them about the essentials for birth. I simply accept and entrust myself to what a good teacher told me. Just say the name and be saved by Amida. Nothing else is involved. So here again he uses the term entrusting, and he indicates that he basically simply conducts himself in accordance with what his teacher, who was Honan Shonen, Honan taught him. Now, I've mentioned before that in reality Shinran actually refined Honan's teaching in the sense that he made an interpretation of the larger Pure Land Sutra, and particularly of the 18th vow of Dharmakara Bodhisattva, that really did specify this power of the vow as being one of us receiving this gift of pure grace, even in spite of any kind of negativity or past bad acts that we might have committed. So in that sense, you know, take this humility for what it's worth. But I think what it's worth is it gives us an insight into how Shinran viewed himself. And to give a better idea of how he viewed himself, we can go on in this chapter where he says, he admits, he says, I have no idea whether the Nembutsu is truly the seed for my being reborn in the pure land or whether it is the karmic act for which I must fall into hell. Should I have been deceived by Honan Shonen and, saying the name, plunge utterly into hell, even then I would have no regrets. The person who could have attained Buddhahood by endeavoring in other practices might regret that he had been deceived if he said the Nembutsu and so fell into hell. But I am one for whom any practice is difficult to accomplish, so hell is to be my home whatever I do. So, you know, he, he's saying, yeah, look, I, I feel so lost, so unable to find my way in the context of any traditional practices that actually require practice, that, you know, I'm so blessed by Honan having given me this easy path, this Nambutsu, this phrase, Namo Mirabutsu, such that all I need to do is to say that phrase, and I will be saved by Amida. Now, I don't know whether it's true or not. I may end up in hell. Either way, I would end up in hell. So I am going to entrust in the vow and entrust in this name that Amida has endowed to us. And then it's interesting because, you know, one of the aspects of Buddhism that I've mentioned actually in, in one of my YouTube videos on my Akala Akala channel is that within Buddhism you often have a reference to, to past ancestors or past masters, if you will, Dharma masters. And, you know, I have referenced the fact that Shinran himself in his writings spends a lot of time focusing on the patriarchs, so-called, and he identifies seven of them that have led to greater and greater refinements in this easy path, in this path of reliance upon other power. 
Uh, the point being here that in the next paragraph uh, or to Shinran in this second chapter of the Tani show sort of makes this connection with past masters in establishing a basis for his own faith, if you will, in this Nambutsu practice. He says, if Amida's primal vow is true and real, and you have to follow the logic here, he says, if Amida's primal vow is true and real, Sakyamuni's teaching cannot be lies. Well, why is that? Because Sakyamuni supposedly taught the Sukhavati or Pure Land Sutra in which the story of Dharmakara is uh, explicated. So, if Amida's primal vow is true and real, Sakyamuni's teaching cannot be lies. If the Buddhist teaching is true and real, Shantao's commentaries cannot be lies. If Shantao's commentaries are true and real, can what Honen said be a lie? If what Honan said is true and real, then surely my words cannot be empty. So Shantao, of course, was the patriarch that preceded Honan. So he's 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 going back, actually going all the way back to the historical Buddha. And so that is the basis upon which he is confirming the validity of his own belief in this Nambutsu as having the power to save him and to give him assurance of rebirth in the pure land. And just to finish out this chapter with a paragraph, he says, Such, in essence, is the Shenjin of the foolish person that I am. Beyond this, whether you entrust yourself, taking up the Nembutsu, or whether you abandon it, is your own individual decision. So, again, we have the term Shenjin, which is the one that he uses, that we've been talking about as best interpreted as entrusting rather than necessarily as faith. And we have him calling himself a foolish person. I think there was a term he used for himself, gutoku, which sort of means bald-headed, which I guess was uh, the, the implication was sort of that he's a foolish person. But the theme of this particular podcast, again, is simply to see these passages as evidence of Shinran's great humility. And the the thing we would want to maybe reflect upon ourselves is, you know, if he, given all his writings, all his insight, all his brilliant interpretations of the of the Dharma, uh, if he sees himself as foolish, you know, in a sense, what does that make us? I, I know what it makes me is, you know, I'm uh, certainly a foolish person, even having the arrogance to to extend my thoughts into a podcast like this for uh, communication with people beyond my own immediate inner circle. But here it is, for what it's worth. Namo Mita Bodes. With that, I will sign off by reciting the Nembutsu in gratitude for being embraced and accepted just as I am by Amita Buddha, never, never to be abandoned. Namo Mita Bodes. Namo Mita Bodes. Namo Mita Bodes.